Yeah, good evening. So it might be a little tough to tell, but there are 150,000 honeybees inside this hive right here, turning nectar into honey. But tonight, some beekeepers right here in Dorchester County say it just got a little bit harder to help keep these little girls alive. She speaks. Everyone asks us, how in the world do we do this? For the bees. So all of the workers in here are female. Diana Rouse lends her voice to the 750,000 bees at her Ridgeville home every day. Well, my first goal is the health of the bees and the environment. The last time I got stung was maybe Saturday. She knows as of Monday, she's one of about 130 beekeepers Dorchester County officials will no longer notify ahead of mosquito sprays. My concern is all communication has been cut off and if something changes in the schedule, then we're not going to be aware of it um, unless we're checking that site every day. Officials confirmed their two week spray schedule will still be online, but could not say why those mosquito spray alerts were stopping because of ongoing litigation. If a beekeeper does not check the schedule daily and is aware of their area being sprayed, um, they could have a potential loss of all their hives. Maybe 150. That's a real fear after millions of Dorchester County bees died in 2016 after officials failed to warn some of those beekeepers about an aerial spray. The bees have actually started rebounding in Dorchester County since 2016, which says everything to that notification. Diane is now circulating a petition to have those individual phone calls reinstated. We're going to protect our bees. Speaking for her fellow beekeepers. It's unreasonable. And as always for her bees. Right now with the bees in the situation that they're in, we don't want to lose a hive. We need to protect all, all pollinators, including honeybees. And tonight, Dorchester County beekeepers say they'll continue talking with county officials to get those individual phone calls reinstated. I say all these bees you see here, they're just too important not to. Working for you in Dorchester County tonight, Brody Hart, ABC News 4. Well, if I have 150 kids, I'm going to keep an eye on 150 kids. The Wando Warriors are kicking off preseason practice, as always, with a winning plan. During these first 15 practices, because we're on the clock. Let's go! The reward is here in, in the fall. All the hard work started in January, so they're, they're ready for this part of the season. Oh, uh, it's pretty humid. Oh, uh, it ain't that hot. It's pretty dank out here. But feeling good. Yet high school football preps are basically year round. Working out any imperfections, but trying not to overstretch the team's other goal. We take care of the kids first. It's all about their safety. An ever evolving set of guidelines strengthened by state and even national standards. It involves everybody. You know, the parents have to be educated, the kids have to be educated, and certainly the coaches. Head coach Jimmy Noonan and his staff constantly train mentally. Every one of these coaches out here is CPR certified. Just in case uh, something were to occur, we're prepared to act. Now look, come on, come on, left for you good. Technology is helping keep everyone focused. Uh, the wet bulb is using the heat, the humidity, the wind, and the sun. This wet bulb monitoring system makes following safety guidelines as clear as a digital readout. Uh, obviously, uh, 88 and above, we're going to adjust uh, <laughs> equipment, what they're able to uh, wear, and how long they're able to participate. It's pretty humid. Pretty human. Last season's heat concerns delayed practices and even some games. So if similar worries pop back up this year. And when it reaches these certain criteria, we can limit practice to them just being in helmet and shoulder pads or just helmets or no practice at all. Uncovering years of aging wood. Who got that bigger bar? And breaking through a serious low country sea hazard. One of the questions most people ask is why aren't we salvaging these boats? Most of these boats have sat out there and have not been registered in the past 10 years. Abandoned boats throughout our waterways. In the meantime, they've collected a lot of rainwater that's actually sat down in the hull of the boat. Environmental advocate Rudy Socha and his volunteer crew are seeing dangers firsthand. 
well, fiberglass can't rot. Almost all fiberglass has wood inside, and once, once water gets into that wood, it rots. There you go, you got a second hand. The group from Wounded Nature, working veterans, busy working on a Saturday. Uh, not too bad, just a little sweaty, but it beats work and then the gym. Oh. There it is. Somebody want that or it's good? A somewhat amusing but also troubling find on these boats removed from years sitting idle. The toilets and the waste tanks pose their own unique problem. So a lot of these boats contain human sewage. They contain a lot of gasoline. Keeping the sewage, gas, and other troubling finds out of our waterways and keeping clear of humans and wildlife. And if you look right here, you can see how this stuff has started breaking apart. That remaining foam could clog up the intestinal tract of sea turtles and shorebirds. To help clear the waterways and get rid of all these old boats. This is a bonus anchor here. Sosha and his team team up with Charleston Police's Harbor Patrol. We've got a group of volunteers and we're able to go ahead and dispose of boats where they might not have funding to uh, take care of those boats or they might not have the water resources to actually go out and retrieve the boat. Anchoring efforts to clear the path for cleaner regional waters. With photojournalist Jason Todd, Brody Hart, ABC News 4. We were at the beach less than two hours ago. When the thunderhead started rolling, I was like, well, we better go back. A really bad storm came through. Lots of hail and wind, twisting winds. It started it getting was real hell that big. It was bigger than that. It got dark and it got real windy. When the storm first started, I think we had three calls in reference to possible fires. We had several roads that were kind of flooded over with water. It was a fairly good sized tree. I've not, I couldn't tell you how big it was. It, it was blocking the roadway on 25th Avenue between Hartnett and Cameron. This is as bad as any storm we've ever ridden out hurricane wise. This was bad. We're on a warship. Everything that we bring for Fourth of July has to be lifted. A patriotic battle between a hardworking crew, the height of the Yorktown, and the rising mercury. When did you start work today? Six o'clock. What's the difference between six o'clock and now? Nothing. <laughs> the porter potties, seating, and tents for the Fourth of July partiers on the flight deck. Anything with food, all of the ice, all of the, the grills. Needs a lift, and while prepping the ship, seaside is tough. We've got 1,500 people that are going to be on the ship, but we have 15, 20,000 people that are going to be here landside. All while one of the Low Country's biggest fireworks shows is launched from this barge in the harbor. And I'm very patriotic, and there's not a better place to be than, you know, on an aircraft carrier. Really sinks home to our true freedom, and uh, I hope our youth carries that on. A pre-Freedom Day celebration stroll through the Yorktown's historic military museum raises efforts to ready the fighting lady for a continuing cultural impact. So our whole mission as a state agency comes down to the 4th of July, if you ask me. Years of experience honoring our nation, event planners at Patriots Point are ready for whatever unpredictable weather might try and dampen the day. We've been doing this for a long time. We've got plans in place. We've got meteorologists that we partner with to make sure that we know just how far, if there is lightning, how far it is, what we need to do. 